And hello, good day. I am Braggy. And I am Egil. And today we are a pair of Vikings from the channel North Worthy Sagas and Stories. And today we're here to talk about history chat, Viking food versus Anglo-Saxon food. So, Egil, so would you have seen a big difference in the food? Not really. Um, we know that the Vikings bought haggis. Yes. Uh, the porridge oats were already there anyway. The Romans bought those. But the point is that the majority of the Vikings would have had not much meat in their diet. Really? Well, it's <laughs> you're ploughing fields all day and things like that. You would have had a lot of vegetables. And if you did have any meat, it would be sort of stuff you've caught yourselves. Now... The thing is, the forests, there would be bear, which is good eating. Yes. As one of our... Uh, two, two of them. Yeah. Fat. So, there's bear. You've got beaver. Yep. You've got wolf, which is probably not what you want to eat. No. Uh, there's wild cat. Yes. And the tastiest of mm. all, wild boar. boar. But all of these things run a risk. Deer. And deer, of course. But then again, Oak. if you're going to hunt something and there's a risk of injury, you can't plow your fields. You can't plow your so. fields. You owe it to your lord. And more than that, you owe it to your family. And a lot of vegetables. However, I did know that when I was a student, uh, we found the remains of Viking um, it's a midden heap. And we found that even a badger skull had been got at. Yes. They wouldn't eat ravens. They wouldn't eat crows. The carrion, a no-no. Yeah, because they are a birds of Odin. Um, so you'd live a very sort of a weird diet. Now, one of the sources we used, and don't be disgusted, is poo. And one of my tutors, the admirable Dr. Bone Jones, taught me a lot about it. By the way, if he ever gives a lecture, go to it. It's great fun. And he found what he called the Lloyd's Bank turd. So called because it was literally under the safe of Lloyd's Bank. <laughs> now, it's about, I'm not kidding you, it's about yay long. Cool, blimey. And about that wide. Yeah. And he mounted it on a piece of mahogany with a brass plaque. And Lloyd's Bank suddenly said, no, thank you. Huh. You can see the point. Well, yeah. This is now insured for £10,000. Oh, right. There you go. Bone actually broke it in bits, a oh, piece off, took a sample out to see what this person had eaten. And it led to an amazing discovery. We know the parasites that they had in the stomach, uh, one called the curus, particularly nasty, it was described to me as the teddy boy of parasites. Uh, it would eat through the pipes in your body, it would come out your nose, your eyes, your ears, and the corner of your mouth. Not very nice. No. And tapeworms. Ooh. Now, tapeworms are... <laughs> you see little white dots of meat. You can't get of these now unless you really try hard. And meat is treated anyway. So you eat it and the little eggs go into your stomach. And you have five or six hundred tapeworms. Now, the average tapeworm is about 23 feet long. Yes. Now, of course, there's only a limited amount of space in your stomach. So, it's one bite for you, two bites for the tapeworms. So, obesity was very rare. And, of course, when you go to the lavatory, you're passing worms. And eventually the head comes out. And could you have dealt with those worms back in the day? Or were you stuck with them? I think you were basically stuck with them. I mean, there are stories that... Yeah, you can purge them out, but I think that's a bit far. But you can't exactly go and get a hot chilli kebab, can you, and purge it out? Well, to be honest with you, I like that. everybody had got them. And one of the problems we had, and I've seen a picture of it, trust me, you don't want to see it, and that's of a prolax rectum. And that's where the rectum actually comes out, and you have to push it back in. Yeah, well, we are a family friendly channel. Yeah. Now, well, I've described it as nicely as I can. Yeah, that sounds nice. But also, we also found the Vikings had fleas and things like that. Of course that. so. I mean, human fleas are much bigger, aren't they? Yeah, but I mean, you can get 
get cat fleas. So I've got them. Yeah. All. I've you know, bite you around there. Yeah. But they tend to bite some people, and not others. Yeah. I'm Funny just, that. I'm just, well, this cat spends its time all over me. But <clears throat> anyway, back to food. We did also find a Viking loaf. Yes. In burned. Uh, 29 different seeds in, some of which, if you're caught with them today, you'll be asking some very, uh, answering some very piercing questions. Yes, hemp the law. seeds. Hemp seeds are one, yeah, um, but pea flour is another one. I was on about this to the baker mm. in the market store the other day. And also there is another problem they had, which um, came to light in 1948 in a French village. That's Ergo. Yeah, Ergo, well, but it's a very rare occurrence. Oh, yeah. It did but, happen. Yeah, but Ergo, what it is, is natural LSD. Yes. And there was a case in France in the late 40s. It, it grows on barley and wheat, doesn't when it? And it's damp. Yes. And this woman of 80, Etzel, tried to throw threw herself out the window thinking she could fly. Uh, gravity told her otherwise. But there are the sort of things inherent in diet of the time. You didn't drink water. You didn't drink milk. You made cheese well, it's milk. A, it's a flat misconception about water. You only drank water if you could guarantee your water source was pure and fine. Yeah. Which in a lot of cases was not the case. No. And also, they had problems where they put the lavatory next to the well. Not a good idea. No, typhus, typhus and all kinds of horrible It's a bit things. like building the world's biggest uh, fireworks uh, factory next to a petrol station. I saw yeah. that in America. Yeah. Uh, but as I say, the, veg um, the diet was mostly vegetables. Um, and there's a thing called peas pudding. Yeah. Split peas. And you could, there's the old rhyme, peas pudding hot, peas pudding cold. And you eat it most of the time. Um, of course, we haven't got potatoes. No, not been found uh, yet. Carrots were either white or purple. So not orange. Smaller. And also the fruit in general. If you're lucky enough to go to Jorvik in York, you'll see apples are about... Yay big? Yeah. And you ate the whole thing. And slows, even smaller. And you ate the whole thing. And we found this in the excrement of people. And the way you test to see whether it's human, you put it in a jar, pour acid in, screw the top down, then you come back, unscrew it, have a smell. If it knocks your head off, it's human. And we found that the human body doesn't process all foods, tomatoes and sweet well, corn. Of course not, sweet corn. And we found that, as I said earlier, they ate the whole thing, the stone and everything. We found the mice got at this uh, cherry stone and chewed it. So, uh, yeah, I think we've spoken enough about excrement. It's yeah. fascinating stuff, but... Uh, and that just... could be a special episode in itself. Yeah, but as I say, the expert on it is Dr Bone Jones. He used to work for the Archaeological Trust, but if you go to York, you see a man with a bow tie. On. Let's talk about how they preserve food. Well, uh, salting was the main thing. And those of you who are, uh, are able to get hold of haki, you know, it's the African dried fish. Yes. Uh, that's basically what Viking, Vikings did. What you do, you soak the dried cod in water. So you've got a bit of salt in it. You then put wild garlic in, maybe a bit of butter, and you've got yourself a nice sauce. The cod, where it's been soaked, loses all uh, traces of salt. That's one thing. And, of course, you know, you talk about um, hardtack, what do you call it? Well, hardtack, just yeah. flour and salt. Oh, no, I meant the meat. Oh, the beef jerky. jerky. Yeah, that was... A, Basically, you can keep that indefinitely. I've got some heart attack in the attic above us. It's about yeah. 15 years old and it's fine. Yeah, it's good stuff. You, you, could, you could eat it. Yeah. Well, it's ideal if you're walking. You put a bag of that on. And you don't eat it raw. Mm. Cook it. Uh, well, I just buy it out of the packet. You don't buy it? It doesn't be. I'll give you a piece of my heart attack. You're never going to eat it raw. Yeah. So, but anyway. No, no, but dry, air dried meat. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's all the fish, if they could get hold of it. Probably not so much here in Northworthy because we're about as far away from the well, sea. Well, we are a bit landlocked, granted. Yeah. What about river fish? River fish, yes, but they taste muddy. And what muddy. about claw daddies? Oh, well. Crayfish. Crayfish. 
if they've got them they would of course be the english one not the american one that's coming now eels eels again there's devil's own job to kill but <laughs> yeah yeah they, we know a they, folk tale about that <laughs> yeah well i mean there's eels um there's all kinds of um th um fish also dogs swans um birds of general uh um all the all the birds you can think of really apart from the carrion ones. so the other day i was reading by dm wilson the viking achievement and it talks oh. about how they'd use tablecloths uh, and yeah. I, think, I find that fascinating the fact that we use tablecloths today mm. and you go back 12 1300 years to the times of the saxons and they had tablecloths well there's an interesting fascinating there's an interesting thing that charlemagne who was a saxon uh had an asbestos tablecloth mm. And what he used to do was when people visited... Oh, what, him, tablecloths? Oh, asbestos. Did it have that in those days? Oh, yeah, it, it occurs naturally. And he used, to, he used to throw it on the fire and amaze them. Uh, yeah, people don't realise asbestos occurs normally. So where did it come from then? Oh, uh, there's asbestos mines and things. It didn't so it's mine, it's a mineral. Yeah. Ah. Um, but yeah, he had this tablecloth which would defy the fire. But uh, I wouldn't imagine he'd be, he lived... Yeah, yeah I've never heard of that. Yeah. So, so there we are, we're comparing basically Viking food to Saxon food and if you've got two long houses, one Saxon and, and one Viking, you'd fundamentally find them eating the same mm. sort of things. But what about the rituals? Would they have different rituals of Saxons to the Vikings about laying the food down religiously, I spiritually? Don't think, don't think or so. Or do we not know that? Don't, well, I personally you don't know, know but... Would, I mean, would, would a Saxon say a prayer before you and, and a Viking just jump into his food? If you're having a feast at a longhouse, you left your sword at the door there. We have found sword racks and there would be a man enforcing that. Mm. Uh, you'd have your eating knife and a spoon. And that would be the entire weapons you're allowed in. I mean, you think about World War Two, and you think about all the constructed bunkers they built down south, and mm. the first thing you're going to go in, what you're going to see, you're going to see a gun rack. Oh yeah. Which you you know you can go around some of these underground complexes and still find them there. Yeah, and I find that fascinating. Mm. The fact that you know the weapon rack is such an old thing yeah. that's still used. Well, we don't have one. There were the laws of hospitality. Uh, that you didn't carry weapons. A tradition that's carried on in the British Army today. If you, you take your hat off and all belts, uh, because they're signs you hang weapons from, and you leave your belt or your Sam Brown and your cap at the door. If you're caught wearing a belt or Sam Brown or hat in a mess, you have to buy everybody a drink. And it's oh. because the, if you, that's the only place where weapons are unacceptable. And it dates from way back then. Um, I've seen many a young lad buy me a drink because he hadn't put a belt on. <laughs> oh, so I think that's very interesting. And we're going to round this video up now. Now, we are going to cover other various aspects of uh, Viking food and Viking drink. Uh, we have done one video in the past called Viking Food and Drink. So watch yeah. out for these videos. And we're also going to address a few things in the Two Minute History Monday yeah. episode as well. So... Any more, any more last thoughts before we go? No, I think that's covered it. Apart from my glasses are dirty again. Oh dear, mm -hmm. I let me wear glasses for this. So, we do hope you enjoyed this video talking about Viking versus Saxon food. Yum yum. I think it's very interesting and no doubt we'll make more content like this. So, Egger, what should they do? Uh, press. Right. Love your Viking shoes. I know. So, we do hope you enjoyed this video talking about Viking versus Saxon food. Yum yum. I think it's very interesting and no doubt we'll make more content like this. So, Egger, what should they do? Uh, press the uh, two minute history Monday or... Leave a comment. Yeah, but we will get back to you. Although it's not two minute history Monday, Egger. Alright. <laughs> Okay, well, what do you tell them? Well, you know, just leave a comment in the old standard way. If not, leave a comment, Viking food or Saxon food, whichever is your preference. Goodbye. Goodbye. Right. You can get changed now. Right. Love your Viking shoes. I know. 
So, we do hope you enjoyed this video talking about Viking versus Saxon food. Yum yum. I think it's very interesting and no <laughs> doubt we'll make more content like this. So, Egil, what should they do? Uh, press the uh, two minute history Monday or... Leave a comment. Yeah, but we will get back to you. Although it's not two minute history Monday, Egil. Alright. <laughs> Okay, well, what do you tell them? <laughs> well, you know, just leave a comment in the old standard way. If not, leave a comment Viking food or Saxon food, whichever is your preference. Goodbye. Goodbye. All right. You can get changed now. Right. Ooh. Now we're done well there. Yeah, got a few going there. All right. Love your Viking shoes. I know. So, we do hope you enjoyed this video talking about Viking versus Saxon food. Yum yum. I think it's very interesting and no <laughs> doubt we'll make more content like this. So, Egil, what should they do? Uh, press the uh, two minute history Monday or... Leave a comment. Yeah, but we will get back to you. Although it's not two minute history Monday, Egil. Alright. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, what do you tell them? Well, you know, just leave a comment in the old standard way. If not, leave a comment Viking food or Saxon food, whichever is your preference. Goodbye. Goodbye.